Recently, the U.S. Federal Reserve Board announced that it will be expanding the Comprehensive Capital Analysis and Review, or CCAR, for 11 more bank holding companies. That now brings the total to 29 banks. These 11 are mostly a combination of U.S. regional and U.S. subsidiaries of foreign banks. These banks all have assets over $50 billion, but are smaller than the 18 current banks currently undergoing CCAR stress testing. These 11 banks have been through a less rigorous stress testing exercise known as Capital Plan Review, which is expected to be phased out. Now with CCAR, there will be public disclosure of the stress testing results and thus heightened pressure to conform to the more stringent guidelines. So what does this mean? As mentioned in a recent risk Insights webinar, Lessons Learned, Current Trends and Future Opportunities in Stress Testing, S&P Capital IQ believes that stress testing worldwide has become increasingly institutionalized by central banks. In other words, it is not a, just a reactionary afterthought, but it serves as a necessary tool used by central banks to assess the systemic risk of their country's banking sector. The CCAR stress tests are designed to go beyond just testing the bank's capital, but to give regulators more insight into a bank's overall risk management practices. Aside from the obvious, ensuring that you have sufficient capital, there are five approaches or must-haves that these new 11 banks can take to prepare for the CCAR stress tests. Approach number one, develop a more comprehensive stress testing framework. First. The framework should be flexible and forward-looking and account for the firm's overall risk tolerance. Second, it's imperative to get the board and senior management buy into actions plans developed in the event the stress scenario actually plays out in real life. Third, the need to involve varied and cross-functional teams with buy-in from multiple stakeholders, including lines of business and support staffs. Approach number two, develop firm-specific scenarios. This has clearly been the focus of credit risk and market risk in the past. But more so now, banks are looking to develop firm-specific scenarios for revenue forecast models, market risk models, liquidity risk models, and operational risk models. A key challenge is making sure the bank has, has chosen the right approach in terms of idiosyncratic scenarios and its choice of PD, LGD, EAD models, and making sure those models actually work to capture the bank's stress scenarios and various risks. Approach number three, connect the variables to obligor loan factors. How do you connect the dots? Importantly, understand the relationship between key risk factors such as occupancy rates and macroeconomic factors such as increase in unemployment for various stress scenarios. To accomplish this requires considerable data, analysis, and modeling expertise as well as business insights. Approach number four, Choose the appropriate models and benchmarks. Banks need historical default studies, correlation studies, and transition matrices to develop the models. In order to conduct an enterprise-wide stress test, a bank must possess or develop a strong internal risk model development process. Approach number five, validate your frameworks. Validating your framework and models, a crucial but much overlooked piece in the past but now regulators and even banks are paying more attention to the model validation. Model validation needs to be conducted both from a methodology perspective or conceptual soundness, use tests, and application testing, as well as from an outcome analysis perspective through backtesting and benchmarking. So, we laid out five key approaches that new CCAR banks should consider as they ramp up their stress testing risk management capabilities. Be on the lookout for additional S&P Capital IQ thought leadership videos and webinars. On behalf of S&P Capital IQ, thank you.